I pronounced that right, um, which is a specific type of musical performance to accompany a psalm. Right, so if everyone wants to turn Psalm 42, I'm going to be reading the ESV. You might have to give me a shout when to click it as well, because I'm not looking at the screen. Right, so, is everyone there? Yeah. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When, when shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember. As I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God. With glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore I remember, from the land of Jordan and Hermon, from Mount Miser, deep calls to deep, at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. So in the beginning, we see the psalmist have the longing for God. The psalmist is fixated on him like a deer is fixated on the running stream when it's parched for water. All that matters to the psalmist is God. Nothing else is relevant at that moment. The psalmist has the longing for God but feels unseen by God. He is seeking after the presence of God but wonders if he is even reachable. If this isn't sad enough, even the people around him question him and say, where is your God? Solidifying his thoughts to this. The psalmist then thinks back to the good old days as we probably all do leading many people to the house of God to praise his name. But all this does is dishearten him more. This makes him feel even further from God. But instead of laying in his despair, he, he questions his own soul. He didn't just accept how he was feeling, but he said, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? He challenges himself, knowing that this isn't how he should be. And he said something that gripped me, something that I definitely don't do enough. After he questions his soul, he says, hope in God, for I shall again praise him. The psalmist didn't just tell himself, you're being stupid, get up. He directed his praise to God. He refocused his attention to the only thing that matters in that time. So we see the psalmist wrestle with his soul, not accept how he's feeling. He changed his sadness to praise, and he turned a rock into a diamond. If we look further down, we see that he does it again. So it shows that this isn't something we just do once in our life, and then we can go skipping down the street. This is something we do regularly, if not daily. Why is this important though? Because our soul is us. Our soul is our mind, our emotion, our will. Our soul is the thing that remains when our body fades away. So when our soul is correct and healthy, our actions and walk will be with God also. I relate to this psalm a lot. When I first became Christian, I was so hungry for God. I knew nothing about him. So I'd go home from college and I would watched about seven sermons online a day just to know who this God geezer was there. I, I knew nothing about. I used to hear his voice so clearly. He used to speak to me and guide me. Um, if it's speaking to someone on the street or just what sermon to watch online. But over time, that voice became quieter. And I didn't hear it as often as I did. And that led me to think back to the good old days where I used to hear God's voice and I'd be singing and dancing in my room to give praise to God. But unlike the psalmist, I didn't question my soul. I accepted how I was feeling. All that sadness and that pain that I felt because I, I felt that I was far from God just pushed me further from him. Even though he didn't leave me, I pushed him away because I felt he had already left. So that is the difference between me and the psalmist in this. I embraced my feelings, which pushed me further from God. But the psalmist realized God never left, even if he felt that. And... Um, turned his feelings aside and gave God the praise that he deserved. So how does this relate to us? So in our life, we will feel far from God. This may happen one time, it may happen all the time. We may have a season where God's voice is speaking to us every moment of the day, 
or some moments where God's voice is just a distant memory to us. We look at those around us who may indulge in their sin and it feels like their soul is saying to us, where is your God? It may be a conversation with a family member or a friend or a colleague who says, if your God exists, why does this happen? Why is there suffering in the world? Why hasn't he spoken to me like he's spoken to you? This may get us down, but instead of sinking into that dark place, we can refocus our eyes to the light. We can question our soul and say, for I shall again praise him. We can take our sorrow and turn it into praise. No matter the situation, good or, good or bad, God deserves the praise. And when that is what we're fixated on, we'll be okay. So, at two o'clock in the morning, I sprung out of my bed and I wrote this down on my phone. And this is how we can re- act on this. I thought of the four R's. Um, I was frantically trying to type with my eyes half open. <laughs> but I managed to write it down, which was good. So, the four R's. It's how we can re- um, act on this. It's rebuke, rethink, refocus, and redirect. Rebuke's quite a strong word, but it rhymes. <laughs> and so it, it works. But by re- rebuke, I mean strongly disapprove or disagree with our soul. Not just accept how it's feeling. But to say, like the psalmist did, why are you cast down, O my soul? And we can rethink how we're feeling. What does the Bible say? Do we have that peace and that joy uh, in our soul that we should have? And then we refocus our soul and our attention to that, we can um, look at the Bible. What does the Bible say? And refocus on that. And then we can redirect everything we have there straight to God. So we rebuke, disagree, rethink, how should we be thinking, refocus into that, and then redirect it to God. And finally, unlike the psalmist, we live in a time where we have the living God inside us and not just around us. We can be comforted by the fact that the Holy Spirit is one with us. Even when we feel far from God, he's right here with us right now. And when we do feel distant and disheartened, we have so much more to praise about than the psalmist did. We have the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, so that we may be with the Father for eternity. So even when people may mock, even when our own soul may push us down, know that Jesus Christ died, so we don't just have communion with him now, for, for eternity and for now and forever through the best days and the worst days I shall again praise him my salvation and my God um, I'd just like to invite up the worship team just uh, for a time of response um, and while they're coming up I'd just like to close with a prayer God I thank you that no matter how we're feeling or any situation around us that we know that you are there for us and that we can praise your name. As we see in the New Testament, even in the worst times when people were in jail, they praise your name and you help them through that. That even when our knees hit the floor, that we can reach great heights with you, Lord. That we can be comforted that you will never leave us, that you're always with us, and that the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we can praise and shout about until the day we're with you. In your mighty name, God. Amen.